Hey, hopefully we don't look as exhausted as we are. <laughs> it's September 1st. The goal was to do, uh, to watch what God was doing over the days of August. So August has come and gone. The hope in our heart when we started that blog was how was God going to get us to Mali despite big odds um, and time for our kids to go to school and us to settle back into Mali. Um, since then, what has God done? You can't make somebody believe what God does, but here's what's happened. There has been, uh, the airports opened back up after COVID so that you could fly into Mali. Not long after that, the airports closed again because uh, Mali had a coup. They kidnapped, they captured the president and prime minister. Um, the president dissolved the government and, uh, and the other countries around it um, closed the borders and the airports so that uh, kind of as a punishment. We have spent a lot of good time with family. Uh, my parents flew out. We've, we've done so many swap kids for sleepovers with the cousins. Um, we've gotten to know the people that let us live in this place and that's been really good to get to know them. They're great listeners. Um, the ladies. Heidi spoke at a, at a ladies thing organized by the same group. Um, meals with people and yeah our five of our kids got baptized um, that's easily the highlight of the month we've had a lot we've had intense talks or um, and communication with our mission the people that are over us in our mission and um, we've come up with a lot of plans and then re come up with a lot of new plans. Yeah. As you know, God we're, opened we're gonna the solve, doors. We're going to solve the visa situation and you know then the, that door closes. We're um, going to you remember yeah, finding you, our passports. Visas, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it it would be a genuine exercise to detail the amount of mountain peaks and valleys low that we have hit in the span of this 30 days. Um pushed us to be prayerful and thankful in all circumstances, which is always our goal. You know, there's, there's a refinement that's happening with us there. I think one, one thing that's happened um, through all of this, you know, kind of something that's happened in us is it has just um, honed our understanding of our commitment to do, to follow God's will, be it difficult, risky, unforeseen, or, or whatever it is. Um, yeah. Not a lot of believers do that. Um, I, th I think God calls us all to to take chances. So the, in this series of communications with people and stuff, um, somebody was kind of admonishing us and made the statement, that would have taken a small series of miracles. It was an email, so I didn't reply to it, but what I thought in my heart was, that was absolutely my goal. It was absolutely my goal to set up for ourselves difficult objectives, to, to put it out there for the world to see, to say, hey, what could God do in this 30 days? What small miracles would he accomplish to move us to a place where we could share the gospel in a unique way, where we could live out um, 
the life of Christ in front of people who don't get to see it otherwise. Um, Yeah, what's the plan now? <laughs> so, you know, I said no right off the bat. The, the suggestion was made early on that we send Joe and Harley back to DA, uh, Dakar Academy in Senegal, um, and we stay here in America and, you know, yeah, keep doing what we're doing. And I said no. I, my, my thought was, okay, I would happily send my kids down to the market to get something for us, but not if I didn't know if I was going to be home when they got back. And uh, that's where we are. We're in this lovely place for like six more days, five, six more days, um, and then we don't know where we're going. You know, we can move in with family, but nobody actually has space for a dozen more people. Um, so... You know what's up in the air? We don't know, we know we won't be here. Well, we don't know, but anyways. <laughs> we're planning to move out of here. We don't know where we're going. My mom and dad would love us to come back to California and live with them. We've explored the possibility of going to Senegal as a half step towards Mali. Um, and we don't know exactly when Mali will open up. And if Mali did open up, would we go there right away or um, yeah, so I got a COVID test today, because <laughs> uh, we'll need that if, if we're going to fly the kids to Senegal, which is our current plan, that say in the next four days. So you said no, then why are you doing it now? Explain that. Yeah, why are we doing it now? Because we've got good, smart kids. Harley said to us, we believed it was God's will before. Why wouldn't we keep taking steps towards that, uh, towards getting us to Dakar Academy and discover his will that way? And I said, there's no reason. That's an excellent way to discover the will of God. Um, and so the next day we started checking ticket prices, finding out where we could get tests, um, and starting to look into maybe we could get Mali visas at the embassy there and trying to figure those things out contacting the school, filling out last, the last step paperwork to get them into school. I suppose we should pay for school sometime soon, too. She and Joe are peaceful about going, ready to go, um, and ready for this next step. And so we're working towards that for them and hoping to follow them soon. Yeah. Harley bought a cello. <laughs> that... Uh, that surprised us. She just was kind of like, hey, I want to go buy a cello. <laughs> and uh, so he Heidi had her out um, and said, well, I'm going to bring her home and you take her shopping for a cello because I'm a little bit more the music guy than she is. And um, we went out and met a great couple who wanted to help us out, gave us a great price on a uh, used and repaired cello that, uh, that she's started learning. Um, but I mean, we smile about that so much because she's not a, um, she doesn't speak up like that. I mean, Zach, Zach tells us 10 times a day what he wants. Adam tells us 20 times a day, Dorothy 40. You know, <laughs> it's pretty much all snacks. But um, you know, they, they like to state what they want. She's not like that, but she really is beginning to pursue those things. She wants to be baptized. She wants to be back at DA. She wants to start playing the cello. Um, and thoughtful, too. I asked her, you know, kind of tell me a little bit about when we were driving to the store. Tell me a little bit about what made you think you wanted a cello. She said, well, um, she heard this song once that really moved her. It's box. Oh, that's oh, a gorgeous song. The, like the opening to a cello solo. We should link that in this video because it's really it's really good. It, it is it is the cello solo. It's the one that if you know any cello solo, that's one you know. And she said, and then she was, she remembered that, and then she also remembered the first time that she saw someone playing the cello. That was Marla, um, who came out to teach our kids for a while, 
um, in Mali, and um, she was passing through here in Michigan and played the cello for us, and Harley said that was the first time that she equated cello with worship and that she wanted to um, be able to worship God with an instrument. That was something she desired. So, taking a cello to Africa. That wasn't in the plan. Got a hard case this month. hard case coming in the mail. Anything else? What has God done? So, this none of this should surprise you. Provided for every need, kept us in contact with the body of Christ, um, brought people to encourage us. Did did make some ways for us to go forward, um, though we haven't seen the fulfillment of that yet. He, uh, he really worked in the hearts of our children to make them flexible. Um, I mean, Joe, Joe is just the picture of that, just um, so capable of letting go of his own expectations and, um, and going forward with a good attitude. He's, He's a good he's, attitude ninja. He's given us rest at night and yep, peace we sleep well. in our hearts. Mm -hmm. I've struggled with a few moments, maybe hours of anxiety here and there, but for the most part I've been incredibly surprised at how peaceful the last week, week and a half have been considering um, some of the the obstacles we've run against and the no's that we've received and the things like that. I'm very thankful for that peaceful heart that he's he's blessed us with and i know a lot of you a lot of people are praying for us um and that he's he's hearing that and and blessing us that way so we're thankful for that because it's not easy to not know what's happening <laughs> it's not and i, I but, but like so she's saying it's not easy but we're peaceful in it and I think some of the some of the rub, some of the conflict comes up with that it's also not easy. It's sometimes not easy for other people to watch us be peaceful in the midst of um, upheaval and, and unknown risk and, and even danger that we, we want to step into. We want to go back to, to Mali. And um, yeah, that... Uh, Creates a little relational conflict. And in a beautiful thing that God has done that equips us for that particularly um, more difficult than average job of going to Mali is that he's given us family that get it. Um, that they, they know the significant risks that, the risks that we're taking their grandchildren into. You know, I and mean, that's a big deal. And, and they believe that God is able, their trust is in Him like ours is, to the degree that, that they also have peace about these big risks. Um, and to be, to be fair and candid, sometimes fight for the peace about those big risks. But, but find it, you know? When you... I'm, th I'm kind, of, kind of back to the miracle thing. Don't you want people to know who God is? You know, God is always telling his people, remember, I'm the one who took you out of Egypt. You know, I took you across the sea on dry land. I was always with you. I never left you. Pillar of cloud in the day, pillar of fire by night. Even when you made golden calves, and you said, this is my God who took me out of Egypt. I mean, just absolute spinning in God's face. And he still moves mountains, or in this case, oceans, to accomplish things for his people, for his own name's sake, you know? And no other goal is really sufficient. I mean, as someone said, you got to think about the long game. 
but God is the long game. <laughs> he is the one that never leaves you. He is the one that has plans for you. You take steps, you know, it's a step, it's a step with a blindfold on. It's a step out the door of an airplane. Um, and he guides your paths. That's how it goes. That's how he gets glory for himself. You fight to go back to a difficult and dangerous place. Uh, a colleague of ours died last night from cerebral malaria. It's, I, won't, I wouldn't call it common in, in West Africa, but it's not uncommon either. Death by malaria is, is a, a reality. Um, and it's not too big of a risk. I mean, and it, God didn't fall down on the job. So us fighting to go back there, we, we know what we're going up against as much as humans can know. And we want that to glorify God. We want God to protect us or to redeem the situation that ends our lives, whatever it is, for his glory. And that's not, that's not for me to control or contrive. I don't, I don't plan, present him with plan options. You know, here's a few good ways. Um, what I do is I just s step out and I... If you're not living by faith, what are you living by? How have you reasoned out in your head that there is something more reliable than faith in God? How have you set before him parameters that he's allowed to work in for you? Support raising. That's happened. People have... The people that support us, I think, what, one new person, but mostly all people that... A few, a couple new. A couple new. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then other people that support us that have raised their support level with the desire to get us out the door, to go back to where we are. You know, they want to, they want to see that happen like we do. Um, and we reached that 90% goal. Um, that was uh, a... Uh, a bar to clear, you know, before we would plan to go back. Um, you know it, if you know the Lord, and we know it, that 90% is not how God provides. God doesn't provide 90% of your needs and you work for 10% to meet him halfway, or meet him partway. Um, there isn't, God doesn't, provide 90% of what you need to accomplish the good works that he's prepared ahead of time for you to do. Um, and everybody knows that. I don't think anybody, any believer disputes that. But few live like it's true. <laughs> I'm not criticizing other people. I'm stating the truth. I mean, maybe I'm confronting other people. I'm, I'm saying he provides 100% for us. We trust 100% in him. And does that look foolish? Yeah, if you're measuring by world standards, it would be stupid to go forward with 90% of what you needed. You know, but that isn't what we're doing. We're going forward with God. There's a lot of dispute about the reality of money and its value and its necessity on a spiritual level. But I'd rather talk about the reality of God in the presence of the lives of his people and his promise keeping. Will he do it or won't he? Does that make sense? No? I think people want to know, so, so what's next then? What about the 90%? What are you 
we love Christian missionary stories like the, the lady that went to Egypt and, you know, housed thousands of orphans. Uh, what's her name? I can't even remember. You know, but anyways, she gets on a boat with like a dollar in her pocket or something ridiculous. She just knew God was calling her and she went and she did it. She was the China woman. Yeah. One of our, Zach recently read her biography. And so we love it in hindsight. <laughs> but nobody, nobody wants to tell somebody to do it, you know? No one would ever, no mission would ever appoint a missionary and then say, hey, as soon as you have $1,200, get on that plane and go, go find out how God's going to provide for you. Right? No. But in hindsight, when it worked out for her, man, we love that story. And God leads and God closes doors. And, um, you know, we, why are we not right now planning to take our family that half step to Senegal? Um, before, on our way back to Mali, which is what we thought was a good idea. Because we respect God's leadership. Um, scripture's really clear about that, about respecting the authority that God has placed over you. And Paul talks about that while he is unlawfully held in prison. And he still says it, you know. And it, I think what he's saying there, not that these guys are doing the right thing by imprisoning someone because they preach Jesus Christ, but... These guys are in authority because God placed them there. That's where their responsibility lies. They're responsible to God. You're responsible to them. And, um, you know, our leaders said no. And, and that's, that's a God's no for me. You know, he, he led us through some very clear open doors, through prayer and reading of scripture with the wisdom of other people to come and work with World Venture to be under their umbrella of, of leadership and authority. And um, that's faith too. That's 100% faith. Trusting that someone else who disagrees with you has wisdom that God is using to guide you. you know? So we're not... At the end of this month, we are peaceful and thankful for sure. We do not doubt that six days will find us in a good place. Probably, I'll probably be in Senegal. And she'll probably be pulling her hair out. <laughs> but, <laughs> pulling her hair out. In a good place. In a, yeah, in the peace of God. <laughs> um, yeah. So, these next months, um, our leadership would like us to wait here while we see Molly come to some form of stability and reopen. Um, the airports? Yeah, Airport. but if they can choose a president or however they're going to go about that, that would provide some semi-stability <laughs> before we go back. And they would like us to continue working on our support raising while we're here. Um, that's what they told us. We will, after we see where we're living, uh, decide what we're going to do about our kids' schooling and um, continue to look towards Molly for when it's a good opportunity to go back. And uh, Lord willing, I will be able to go help on the school board again um, in October and maybe be able to visit our kids that are there. So that's what we're looking at right now. I'm glad I got you. A good practical girl and me your dreamer idealist. Yeah. People like to know I'm practical too. No, I, I know. Yeah. I'm going to pray and I want to encourage you guys to keep praying for us. That is what God says to do. It's effective and it glorifies him when we turn to him in everything. You want to pray real quick and then I will? Sure. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we are so thankful uh, 
for the blessings that you've brought us, the blessings of uh, a place to live, family, and people that care for us and pray for us. And thank you for guiding us and being faithful to give peace in the midst of um, actually many disappointments this month, many sad times, and you continue to bring peace and to give us your comfort, God. And we thank you for that. And we just pray that we would continue to be faithful, to serve you every day, to have the right attitudes um, towards the difficult things you bring us, and um, that others would come to know you because um, of our right attitudes and our love one for another, uh, that we would have opportunities to share you with the people around us. And thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, I'm, uh, I want to say our thanks to you too. I thank you for calling us and setting us apart. I thank you for leading us into um, difficult things and for teaching us to know Christ through them. I thank you for keeping your promises unfailingly, God, as you build in us a confidence and a faith that is, that is unnatural to ourselves. I thank you for your spirit that leads us into all understanding and, and teaches the scripture to us as we read them. I thank you for how you've called our children to follow in Jesus' footsteps in baptism. And they're your children, as they always have been. I read it today in Ezekiel, that uh, the mother, the father, and the child all belong to God. There is no... Um, there is no point of separation between God and someone. I thank you for your body that in millions of different personalities and capabilities and understandings and cultures and languages all work together to form the body of Jesus Christ here on earth the visible, tangible reality of Emmanuel, God with us. We need each other, God. I confess my need of all the people involved in this. Even people I don't know, God, we need every member to be a whole body. And Jesus, your body is always whole, complete and sufficient. I pray for those that aren't yet added to the body. I think about Hebrews 11 that says about the better thing that you have planned, which is that we would be complete together with every member of the body of Christ. Heidi prayed that we would be able to continue to share about you. And I think specifically about your unique call to us, and I think of the people in Cacciolo, God, those people that are yours that are yet to be born spiritually, to be reborn into newness of life. Unify your body, God. Lead people to pray for us, to pray with us through all the situations that you've got us in, the obstacles and difficulties that are before us that we have need of you to overcome. Glorify yourself in us, Father. In Jesus' name.